Man, I was just cruising on this airplane, looking at the flat horizon that rose to my eye level, looking at the sun, which was really close and big. BS doesn't go into any detail about how he established the distance to the sun whilst aboard this aircraft. In reality, he's utterly failed to take account of glare, which in itself tells you nothing about the size of the light source or the distance to it. So how does he know that the sun is big and close just by looking at it with his eyes? He doesn't, and he can't. How long have we been traveling at this altitude? It seems like we haven't been changing our altitude at all. BS apparently expects his altitude to change throughout the flight. You can probably see where this is going already, but first, let's summarize flight. Lift is one of the four forces acting on an aircraft. To maintain lift, a wing needs airflow. However, any solid object moving through a fluid, such as air, is subject to drag. On an aircraft, this is due to factors such as friction with the air and wingtip vortices, which is why modern aircraft have winglets to enable smooth airflow and improve fuel efficiency. BS is on just such an aircraft, and it appears to be an Airbus A320. Drag, as you'd expect, needs to be balanced with thrust to maintain forward speed and hence lift, which is necessary to balance an ever-present downward acceleration. So I wanted to visualize this on the ball that we lived on, cruising at 40,000 feet in a straight line. So I came up with this graphic, 40,000 feet going horizontal, because in my reality, a straight line is a straight line, right? I don't know about other people's realities. Well, that much is obvious. The reality that other people inhabit is one where an object will remain at constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force. The reason an aircraft doesn't fly off in a straight line is because, spoiler alert, there are external forces acting on it. Why is it even necessary to explain this? BS doesn't explain why he thinks aircraft should travel in straight lines. The most likely explanation for reality not matching his expectations is that his expectations are wrong. However, at no point does this occur to him. In my reality, the plane gains altitude as it gets further and further away. I mean, not before long. This plane should be in space. Right? Wrong. So then I go back to my reality, and I find out that we just take off, hit 40,000 feet, and cruise over flat land like everyone experiences. That's what reality is. But then some asshole on the plane told me that gravity kept us from going into outer space. So I asked him, hmm, how does that work? I really am wondering. No, he isn't. Satisfied with the level of research he had undertaken by asking a random person on a plane, BS apparently didn't think to look into it any further before making this complete dung heap of a video. So he told me, once you reach your cruising altitude, the gravity just bends you, and you magically follow the curvature of the Earth. Gravity is a conservative effect, meaning that the negative work done by gravity when raising an object against it is exactly the same as the positive work it does in bringing the object back to the ground. Raising an object in a gravitational field gives it gravitational potential energy. Positive work done by gravity converts it back to kinetic energy as it falls. When an aircraft is in level flight, inertia would tend to want to keep the aircraft moving in a straight path, which would suggest that as the plane flies it should gain altitude just by virtue of flying in a direction that would take it away from Earth's surface. Before BS gets too excited by thinking he's right, it's time to inject the aspects of reality that he prefers to label as magic. The aircraft is flying in a gravitational field. Gravity is always exerted on it. So the principle of potential and kinetic energy exchange takes place. Aircraft gains a bit of altitude in the gravitational field, gains potential energy, loses kinetic energy, falls a little, loses potential energy, gains kinetic energy, blah blah blah. 
it's a continuous exchange. The result, when lift and gravity are in balance, an aircraft achieves what is termed level flight and takes you around the world at the same altitude. Can you explain to me what force is acting on it? Gravity, you fucking retard! <laughs>